This is Thoughts Become Things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I'm Jeremy Lopez, and I'm just so glad you guys are with me today. You know, you guys are great supporters of the ministry. You're great supporters of, you know... Uh, prophetic words of my books and my courses of just everything we have out and I'm so just glad I'm glad and I'm and I'm happy about knowing that I've got a big family out there in this amazing earth <laughs> that helps support us and sort of join on board with us to know hey you know I hear people say all the time Jeremy no one teaches the stuff you're teaching right now like no one is talking about this and then you look and you think there's actually thousands of people out there that are talking about this but it's just they're so selective and few and far between because the fact that you know hey let's just face it, you know, you've got those who are really loud out there, you know, in the community of Christianity, and those who basically just, hey, I'm just sitting back, chilling, and just teaching my teaching the things God's put in my spirit, and just going with the flow. And that's more like that's more like me. You know, people ask me all the time, like, have you ever been on television? Have you ever traveled? I'm like, look, I've traveled to like 15 different nations, spoken in some of the largest crowds in the world, been to I think like 45 states here in the in the in this in our country of America. I've been on television. I've been on satellite. I mean, I've I've done it all. Radio shows, you know, um, spoke to the king of Norway. I mean, you know, prophesied to President Perez, former President Perez of Israel. And I've been there and done that. I have, I've gone to the top and, and now I'm just like, you know, chilling. Because I know now in my life, I'm not here to make myself be in the spotlight so much. I'd rather be in the spotlight of God, you know, and doing what I'm called to do and just enjoy enjoy the journey. That's the beauty. Just enjoy the journey. And and one thing I love about what we teach here at Identity Network as well and and then me personally as a ministry, since Identity Network is sort of my ministry, is really bringing out, you know, what I call universal principles. You know, if you really think about it, one of the things that me, that most of you tell me, you know, when you write in is saying, hey, you know what, I, I like what you're talking about. Because you're talking about universal principles and kingdom laws and everything else. And we want to know how to work those. And I here's, here's how I look at that. I always say, yes, we need to learn to work the laws of the universe that God has established in motion. Why? Because we want to work with them to where they work work with us as opposed to suffering from lack of knowledge and, and having things work against us only because we don't have the wisdom to know, the knowledge to even care, you know, how things work. Think about sowing and reaping. If a person did not know how sowing and reaping uh, it's it's set up in the in the universe, guess what will happen? Then then all of a sudden they're gonna begin to say, My life is horrible, everything's working against me. Well hey, oh, hold on a minute. It's not working against you. It's just it is because you don't know how to work the system, work the law. And that's the beautiful thing, beautiful thing of the kingdom is really understanding and diving in. I want to know how everything works, how everything ticks. Why? Because I want it to work with me and for me and not against me. And so it sort of brings to light the scripture that says, if God be for us, who can be against us, right? I want to make sure everything is is for me and not against me. And I think also you give a type of respect. If you think about it, you give a type of respect to the things of God when you when you want to honor it by knowing about it. You know, people don't realize when you know when you study to show yourself approved, like the Bible says, when you study and you you dive in there and you learn about things. To me, I look at I look at things in the universe as alive, like a live person. Like I look at it as, as being alive, and that is, I want to honor and respect something by figuring out how it works, what it likes, what it doesn't like. I mean, don't you? I mean, some people don't think of it that way, but the key, the key thing with me is well, I see too many people on the earth, too many people right now in the world that turn their back on things they don't understand. And so they write it off as being wrong because they don't understand it. And to me, honest and truthfully, to be very blunt, that is so immature and so childish. And really, you're missing out on a blessing because maybe God sent you something that you didn't understand to actually bring you a new awakening that would actually jettison you and push you into a greater awareness, greater level of God's favor in your life, and you just turn it down because you didn't want to get to know it because you couldn't wrap your brain around it because you can't wrap your brain around it. It's now not going to be for you. You know, and that's the key thing I've learned is I want to study everything. I mean, I want to study. I want to study everything from Christianity. I want to study everything from science to the universe, how things work, how things operate. Because you know what, I, I want. I want to walk out of this life into the next life in the heavens with God, and to be able to really know. You know what? 
I was I didn't suffer so much with knowledge. I wanted to respect everything that God made, and also I want to be able to know how things work. And so I think many of you are like me as well on, the, on this on this plane that we're getting on board and taking off with. All right. So today I want to talk to you guys about awakening from limitation. Awakening from limitation. Now I'm not going to lie and tell you that this did not come from my book because it does. All right. But I I usually in my I have Instagram lives on 10 a.m. Central Time every Monday morning on my Instagram of Identity Network. All right. With that said, I always take excerpts from the book, but, however, I want to say this, but I don't actually talk a lot about what's in the book. I literally, I'm spirit-led. I talk about other issues and other areas pertaining around that book because I don't want to give away the book. And when you get the book, many people say, my goodness, it's like so much more that you didn't even talk about. And I'm going to be like, surprise, <laughs> because I don't want to tell you what's in the book. I want to tell you things that are surrounding the book that are on the same wavelength of knowledge with that to where you can see if, you know, that if he's got this knowledge on this area or I like what he's saying, imagine how much more I'm not hearing on the Instagram life that it will be in the book. So that's the beautiful thing that I love to do, uh, you know, with the podcast and the Instagram lives. And so if you have not joined with us on Instagram, definitely do it. It's Instagram. Um, for Identity Network, Monday mornings, 10 a.m. Central Time. I go live and I do teaching. I do sometimes prophesying. I, I mean, we have a blast. Let me just put it to you that way. All right. So today on Awakening from Limitation, I want you to think about that for a moment. Awakening from Limitation. Because I want people to begin to understand, first of all, that A, every one of us in life are limited in some shape, form, or fashion. And what are we limited um, from? I mean, by we're limited because we don't have the knowledge to know how to work that work the system. We don't have the knowledge to be able to really understand exactly that limitation to you might look unlimited because you haven't scoped it all out and learned about all of it. Hello, most people don't realize that. It's not like we wake up one day and say, you know, wow, I want to learn more. Um, you know, um, and I'm limited. Well, some people believe or not have have. Woke up during the morning and literally said to themselves, "Man, I, I you know I got everything working for me and and my life is unlimited." And yet they don't realize that they're still functioning out of a limited perspective perspective because they don't realize that they haven't even scanned out or scoped out everything that's in the boundary of their limitation. So therefore, they don't realize that there's actually more outside of that. Okay, so here's a, here's a great example. If, when you're on planet Earth, if you've never heard of science, if you've never been off planet Earth, which we none of us have, <laughs> except for an astronaut, it's good for you. But if I'm walking on this Earth and I and I've never seen a satellite, I've never seen a telescope, nothing, then I'm going to think, you know, that when I look up in the stars, I'm going to think, well, maybe the Earth, the Earth is flat. Maybe maybe it's like that's all there is. Maybe there's not. I mean, if I've never heard of a universe, what if I just think it's just sort of like just land exist. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, it's, it's hard to even fathom that, much as fathom how the universe is, is structured now anyway. So imagine you're going to think this is all there is. Like, you would never think that above us or below us is actually like this huge universe that we're on a ball floating into space and nothing's holding us up except God, you know? Little scary. I'm not going to lie about it. Little scary, okay, folks? But you wouldn't know that, right? And so you look up, you're thinking this is all there is. There's, I mean, there's nothing outside here. So there's no universe, there's no planets, there's no stars. This is just all there is, right? Right? Because everywhere I walk is what I'm going to believe in. Everywhere I, everywhere I walk is what I can is my experience. And my experience is going to be that of this is reality. So there can't be anything else out, out outside of my experience unless I learn about other people's experiences and I watch TV from the telescopes and see that wow, there's something that exists far beyond what I can see. Right, and so that's how limitation versus unlimitedness works. Because you really don't know there's something outside of your limitation because you've never been outside your limitation. Hello. And you need to think about that. And that, and there's. Uh, let me give you another great point. It's what I call closed-minded Christians, and that means that which which really once again limitation goes with every human being on Earth. Okay, but un, but closed-minded Christians are those who only believe what they read, only believe what they see, only believe what their preacher tells them, and, and doesn't. And if they can't wrap their brain around it, they then it must be wrong. It must not be God, and therefore they stay in their little us for no more corner, you know, in the in the back room, and that's where they think that they're free, and yet it's a 
cry in shame because they'll miss out on loving people that they normally would love. They'll miss out on learning things that they could get their hands on. They'll miss out on so much. And so I'm not a closed-minded Christian. I'm a person that as I'm, I'm very extremely open-minded because I have the Spirit of God in me. I trust things. I trust God. I don't have, I don't have a problem with walking on the, on the plank and jumping out into, by faith to learn about something that maybe I don't understand. You know, I'm that way with people. I don't write off people to say, well, I don't understand you, how you live, how you think, how you, you know, what you, what you believe in. I just don't do that. I mean, why would I disrespect somebody by not even saying, you owe it. You know, I owe you because I love you the right to at least understand where you are in your life and how you got there. I mean, you, I'm, oh, I, you deserve that. I owe that to you if I'm going to love you and if I know you. And I think people who don't do that, I think, is a disrespect to those people. And I would say if people don't do that to you and they think that you're just wrong but they're not willing to dive in to understand you more, you don't have a friend. You have somebody that you need to run from. That's just that's bottom line. And so when you look at awakening from limitation, you have to begin to understand what exactly we're we talking about here. And a lot of this, of all these concepts, come from my book, Spiritual Awakening, which is which is the book of the month this month. And truthfully, guys, we've already sold out of thousands of them. Like I'm talking, like we've already sold out. And I got a new shipment coming in that's going to actually arrive this afternoon. How interesting is that? Then we have another shipment this afternoon because, I mean, even people this morning, I'm like, guys, like, you know, we can sell a book, but it's not going to be here until this afternoon. So we've already sold out. That's a that's a dynamic blessing. But good thing is, if you guys order it today, it's going to back, be back in town. I mean, back, back in stock by tonight or maybe first thing in the morning. So get yours while it's on its way. All right? I'm, that's all I'm going to say. Spiritual awakening. And it's something that transcends past so many different things. Thinkings and so many different people. So that's why I'm saying everyone will be blessed by this. It gives it gives the perfect right amount of empowerment to awaken anyone on planet Earth. All right. So when I say that, I want you to understand a couple things here. When you're dealing with um, when we're dealing with an awakening from limitation. First thing is this. Okay. Notice we could say, for example, uh, a call to adventure. There's a, there's one thing you've got to begin to understand is it's time to find the call. Of adventure, and that is, are you truly adventurous? I'm not talking about, hey, I get out of the, I get out of the house one day a week to go to the grocery store. Yeah, no, that's not adventurous. And I'm not talking about people who say, well, I don't, you know, I don't have any money, so I can't travel the world, you know, like you or other people. That's not, that doesn't mean anything. Adventurous means when you shift your life up every day, and without every single pattern that has to be met or made. You know, dotted your eyes, cross your T's. Doesn't mean you can't be professional, because because you have you need to and you have to. Doesn't mean you don't. You know, let your yes is yes, your no's your no's. Yes, because you have to. It means switch those who switch up their their habits every day. Maybe get in the shower after they brush your teeth. Maybe put their clothes on before they brush your teeth. No matter what the case may be. But they but every day they live not out of change, but they live out of adventure because they want their life to be shaken up. They want their life to be shook to be shaken every single day. So they don't mind how it turns out or how it gets there because because every part of it's the journey and it's and it's a fun journey and they love to experience not just change but just go with the flow of what it is you feel like God's leading you into and how you should restructure things. You know, not sitting down saying, I can't do that like I did yesterday because that's 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 the same as it was yesterday. No, no. Then you're making a law out of it and, and law kills, right? So we want the spirit to flow to say, today I'm just going to just have at it. <laughs> you know, that's some of the first steps of understanding you know exactly how you're going to feel about your limitation versus your unlimited, uh, 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 unlimitedness, or your unlimited. And what I mean by that is this: is if you start feeling a little bit uh, raw, you know, as you're experiencing this, and you start to feel a little bit, oh, I'm not happy, I'm not comfortable with this situation, then you know automatically right then that's because you are in limitation. You are in such a rut of, of, of boundaries that you're recognizing that you're stepping outside those boundaries and it's making you feel uncomfortable. That's a, that's a red flag right there to let you know that you can't ever move into an awakening even when you're still feeling slightly on edge when you're still feeling slightly uncomfortable because you're sort of messing up your schedule and it feels bad. It feels weird. It feels awkward. I don't know, I don't know if I can do this or not. Then that's a red flag right there. So you can. So I can tell you this. You know, spiritually speaking, you're still a little far away from the, from having a spiritual awakening. Why? Because you're you you know you you feel sort of um, unedged. You, you sort of feel iffy. You sort of feel uncomfortable just by the slightest movement. So this movement of I can't brush my teeth before this. I got to do this, and so they begin. It begins to throw them off. 
and you don't want to be thrown off, right? These are some points you've got to begin to dive into to understand exactly how to begin to awaken out of these things. And so on this podcast, I wanted to leave that with you because I'd rather you guys meditate on that this week to say, let's see what I can change. Let's see what I can budge and move this week in what I'm used to doing my patterns and let me see how I feel. Because I would say to you today, take that with you today. We'll sort of discuss this in the next couple of podcasts you know, as we go to uh, go along to really begin to understand on all these points how far you can walk on the water and see how you feel. Because I want each and every one of you to have a dynamic spiritual awakening. But before spiritual awakening happens, you got to have a little bit of change to, that needs to be initiated. That's a thing you got to begin to dive into. All right. So folks, as always, thank you for tuning into our podcast today. Keep up with what we're doing the next couple of weeks. It's going to be good. And you guys are awesome. As always, don't forget, go today and create the day you want to have in your life. Have a blessed day. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.